and I want to address something, a question that perhaps some of you have, maybe none of you have this question, but it's a question occasionally asked of me by young actors and actresses, people of every age who want to be actors and actresses. And they go, I, I, I think I want to be an actor. What do you think? Do you think I should become an actor? To which I respond, absolutely not. Why? Because if you have to ask the question, should I be, the answer is no. Unless you say to me, I have it in my blood, I, it burns my blood so bad, I just want to act. I'm doing a little play down at the Hudson Theater there, and I was at the NoHo Arts Center, playing just spear-carrying kind of a part. You know, I, I didn't have much of a part, but I'm doing lights on one show, and it's just I have to. I'm parking cars and waiting tables because I must act. I go, okay, now you got a shot. Okay, if that's what you're telling me, then you have a chance. So if your question is, should I be an actor, the answer is probably no. And we're going to talk about uh, some, there's some good tricks in uh, cold readings going into audition. The way we get jobs as an actor, or get into plays or whatever, you know, jobs that are, you know, free jobs, experience jobs, doing equity waiver theater or little tiny plays anywhere, you have to go and read, you have to audition. And there's some tricks for auditioning, we'll talk about those. And we'll talk about an epiphany that I had. Um, it was a, an induced epiphany by a man, a, a, an acting teacher by the name of Roy London. And this occurred in 1993. At this point, I had been an actor. Let me think about that. I think that's uh, 26 years. Yeah, 26 years at this point. 1993, I'd been an actor 26 years. And I was working. I'd done a show called St. Elsewhere for years, been nominated for Emmys and what have you was doing very good. Starting in 82, when I landed that plum job, things got pretty easy for me as a professional actor, I won't lie to you. After you were in a show like that, Hill Street Blues or St. Ellsbury ER, you get in a series like that that runs, in our case, six years, you're going to be guaranteed a certain level of work. It might be dinner theater in, you know, Des Moines or something, but you're guaranteed acting jobs unless you really screw up and, you know, get arrested with a, you know, a needle in your arm and run into a busload of kids. You know, I mean, you're going to work the rest of your life, unless you're extremely unlucky, you do something really crazy and stupid. But at this point in 1993, I was doing a show called Winnetka Garoda, an Aaron Spelling show, a pretty unnoteworthy show, but I really wanted to, I wanted to do very well at it. So I went to this guy that uh, a friend of mine, Gary Shandling, had gone to, and a comedian who's also a wonderful actor, and Sharon Stone had been to him, another friend, and I said, this guy's very good. So I went to him and just wanted help with his part. And he gave me some very good help. Then he said something one day that I'm going to say to you. And I didn't at all get it at first. What he said, one thing I want you to remember, Ed, the most interesting thing to watch from an actor, comedy or drama, it's universal, is how a character deals with pain. How a character deals with pain.